Found footage 3D. Yes, it is a very, very dumb title, but it actually plays off of that pretty well. Uh, so here's my story. I went to, I drove like an hour to go see Paranormal Activity 2 years and years ago. And it was like, as I said, we didn't get it in my town, so I had to drive very far. I got there and I went with this chick, uh, not like a girlfriend or anything like that, just some girl I used to work with. And we get there and it's sold out. And I was furious. I just drove so far. And she was like, yelling at the people as we left like we're gonna come back tomorrow and we're gonna see this in 3d and i remember just looking at her like why the fuck would anyone ever make a found footage film in 3d and i thought she was the dumbest fucking person in the world in that moment lo and behold that this would come back and bite me in the ass later there is officially a 3D found footage film. Now, I got a, this is currently streaming on Shutter, and I got a, an email from them asking, you know, if I wanted to sign up for 3D glasses and this and that. It was like two weeks ago. So I signed for that thing. They never sent me another thing. So I did not get the 3D glasses that I was hoping to get so that I could watch this in 3D. So unfortunately, I didn't even get to watch it in 3D, which when you have a movie where 3D is in the title, you, you know, obviously that's the way it was meant to be seen. That being said, this is going to be part of my negatives, but I'll just say it outright. One of the things that really bothered me about this movie is that it didn't play off of the 3D almost at all. Now, granted, I wasn't watching it in 3D, but I've seen enough 3D movies, whether I saw them in actual three dimension or not, but take Friday the 13th 3, Jaws 3, you know, there's clearly scenes that are purposely put there to come at the screen and they're reaching for things in the, you know, there's almost none of that in this movie. And so I'm just sitting there like, why? Like, it's a gimmick, and I get that, and they play off of that in this movie. But why not incorporate things, if it is your gimmick, to be three-dimensional? It just, I don't understand that. So, anyway, getting to my thoughts on this movie. I think this is pretty clear. If you're going to watch a found footage, like, literally, the title of the movie is found footage, and you don't like the found footage genre or subgenre, why are you watching this? So I, I don't even think I feel like I need to say, like, if you don't like found footage movies, don't check this out. Like, the title is found fucking footage. So anyway, um, I liked this movie. It had its problems for sure. Um, this movie is basically trying to be the scream of found footage movies. It's trying to be a satire on a over-exhausted subgenre, something that's been flooded ever since Paranormal Activity hit it big. Obviously, Blair Witch was the first big found footage movie, but that didn't really spawn too many found footage movie copycats. It had like a couple quick ones, but it kind of died off. And then in 2009, when Paranormal Activity was released, that really opened the floodgates to what then became the found footage subgenre. And this movie is, you know, one of the first to poke fun at it. Uh, and as I said, it, it is. And, and, and like Scream, all the things that it's poking fun at, because this movie is about a film crew who wants to make a found footage horror movie, and their gimmick is going to be shooting it in 3D. And the guys that are also there to film like behind the scenes stuff, he gives them a 3D camera so that their special features will also be in 3D on like the DVD Blu-ray release. Which is fun, it's, it's a cute gimmick. It explains why the 3D's there. But whilst in the movie and they're talking about the found footage genre, they point out all of the classic horror or uh, found footage cliches that have you know been adopted since the birth of this 
where it's like, why are they still filming once shit's going down? And, you know, they, and, and all the questions that they pose of just like Scream, they end up doing themselves. But I think, and I'm not a huge fan of the Scream series, but Scream definitely did it better than this. And one of the main reasons that Scream did it better than this is because Scream is just a better movie. It's better written. The characters are more iconic. The characters have better dialogue and whatnot. Now, I think the acting in this movie is actually pretty good. And when they're acting within the movie, within the movie, their acting is bad. And I think people don't give credit enough to bad acting from decent actors. Like, it's not, it's actually harder than you think it is to act bad when you're a good actor. I'm not saying these guys are great actors, but the way the characters played off of each other, it felt very real. It very much felt like, you know, a crew of people who have worked together before. It reminded me of Houses October Built in that way, where that group melded well together. Like they really played off of each other and they felt like friends and people with problems and relationships and exes. Those felt realistic. And that was fine. Unfortunately, they paid so much attention to the drama. To, you know, there's a there's a guy who hires his wife who and they're having like a rocky relationship and they're supposed to be playing the couple within the movie, within the movie. And, you know, and then they're having like fights in the movie and then they're having fights within the movie, within the movie. And they're like paying off of each other, which is a novel idea and I get it, but it just bogged the film down because I think a lot of the times they forgot they were making a horror movie here. Now, there are scenes in this movie that come out of fucking nowhere. And it's like, I'm not going to say about how long it is in, but it's later in the film. I don't want to ruin anything if you case you watch this. I, I think if you really like the found footage genre and you want to see kind of like a satire on it, with a couple unique little spins, definitely check this out. But there are scenes that come in this that are just like, whoa! Like, I don't jump, but like, when I saw it, I was like, holy shit! Like, I was like, ah! Like, my mouth dropped, because I was like, so unexpected, some of the things that happen. So they do throw in. And they, they mention within this that jump scares are cheap, and that they, you know, that it's lazy filmmaking and that it's cliche on top of a cliche and that it's just, you know, somebody doing lazy writing and this and that. And I think a lot of people can agree on that. And they don't rely on a lot of jump scares. I mean, they rely on building some tension. They, as I said, they mostly focus on drama, but in the moments they do have. And then the scenes aren't jump scares as much as they're shocking. Like it happens so fast. And it's not like something comes out of a corner and is like, boo, something happens that's like, oh shit, like, and it's cool. And those are the scenes that I really enjoyed. Um, and there, there's, a, there's definitely a few of them. Uh, the sound guy in this movie reminded me of Gerard Butler in 300. I kept looking at him like, it was maybe, but a much fatter one. Definitely didn't have an eight pack. Not fat, but... Fatter than Gerard Butler, but pretty much every fucking person's fatter than Gerard Butler in that movie. And he makes a bunch of Army of Darkness quotes in the beginning. So, he was instantaneously cool for me. Um, but yeah, so... Uh, there was a scene at the end where they had, like, two cameras synced up together. So they were, like, sp you know, split... There, wait, where's the camera? There it is. Split screening it, so, like... There was action going on on this side and action going on on this side. And um, at first it was kind of like, this is stupid. This is reminding me of like, you know, two player when you're at home with your friend and, you know, you're playing on the same screen, split screen. It was annoying at first, but then I realized like they were synced and they were like all doing it in one take and they were like running to each other and then getting in a car together and then go... And I was like, wow, you know, actually, just from a filmmaker's perspective of how hard that would be able to pull off, especially when you're filming at night and you're filming with handheld cameras and the actors have to do it and they have to make their marks and they have to do it together and there's action sequences going on, you have to sit back and appreciate how much time that would have taken to at least plan out or how many different takes that they had or whatever. So even though I felt like it was a little bit of an annoyance at first, I did end up appreciating how hard it would have been to do. 
Um, so yeah, I, I liked it. I mean, as I said, it's currently on Shudder. So if you have Shudder, if you don't have Shudder and you love horror, I don't know why you're not doing because that shit's awesome. It's a great, uh, it's a great platform to have. Uh, it's best horror streaming service by far. It's like a Netflix for horror. So if you don't have Shudder, uh, definitely check it out. But um, I think if you're a big fan of the found footage, John, I know a lot of people are tired of it, and I get that. And I think by the title alone, you should know whether or not to avoid this. Uh, but I think it's worth your time if you're really into it, because it does poke fun at a lot of the you know obvious like cliches and tropes that have that have come up in this in this subgenre. And I'm I am a fan of it, as I've said in other videos, like. As long as it's a good film, I don't give a shit what style they use. So I feel like it's just yet another medium to tell a story in, and I'm glad that we have it, because we have a lot of different ways that you can tell stories, and this is a cool one, because it very much makes you feel like you're there. Now, that doesn't, that doesn't, that's not how it works for most people, or some people, or however many people, I don't know, I haven't fucking went out and taken a survey or anything. <laughs> when I talk to a lot of people, they, they scoff at found footage at this point. I would say, you know, like seven out of 10 or something that I've talked to are just so over the found footage thing, but they keep going to them. They still make like a hundred million dollars <laughs> when they release them. Oh, maybe I'm full of shit on that. When's the last time we had a found footage movie in the theater? Okay, it's been a little while. I'm a liar, but a couple years ago. But yeah, I just, I, I don't know. I thought that this was a fun poke at this genre, so. If that sounds like funny, I would I would check it out. But as I said, it does get a little bogged down in the middle with too much drama. Uh, but the things that do happen are worth the wait, I think. So anyway, let me know if you check it out.